everybody. Welcome to this episode uh, number 12, and we're going to work on electric guitar, the rhythm guitar stuff, uh, for uh, a different tune, Planetary Misalignment is the tune, and it's Ken Lassane doing the rhythm guitar parts, and I'm going to start with a little bit of the editing notes and what things sound like with everything bypassed, and then I'll start adding different uh, effects that I've added to kind of help either clean up uh, certain things that I wanted to clean up for the mix or correct some things that I wanted to correct. Uh, so let's start with the editing. And as you can see, uh, you know, definitely kind of chopped it up in a little bit. So I'm just going to play what Kenny played on this one section, which is like my A section of the tune. This is dry, no effects. <laughs> So on this one, generally Kenny played it really cleanly and uh, the reason for a lot of the edits here was just to lock up with what was happening with what I was doing on the electric bass and the drums and just to try and get everything together. So this is without any effects, this is with the drums and the bass. I've got the guitar up a little louder than normal so you can kind of hear it in perspective uh, but not in final mix kind of position. Now this is just... Um, Kenny's rhythm guitar, electric bass, drums. So that gives you an idea of the vibe of the, the A section here. Um, all right, so now let's go back to just Kenny and let's take a little look at more of the editing things. Uh, so, like I mentioned, I just did a bunch of tweaks in some of the sections uh, just to kind of lock in with what was happening on the bass and the drums. Sometimes there's a reason for all this nudging and it has nothing to do with a performance of an uh, individual more so than it might be things like latencies between all the different systems um, of how things were recorded, what the recording chain was as far as what kind of uh, hardware they're running into. Um, and sometimes stuff gets just a little out of alignment, uh, whereas when they're recording, it sounds perfectly fine and grooves really well. But by the time it gets to me, because everything is remote recorded, I have to sometimes listen to it and look for those sort of technical things that are outside of a, a player performance. It could just be like an interaction between the players. Normally in a live session, when people are in the same room, they make adjustments as they're hearing stuff and there's a lot of eye contact and since we're remote recording we don't have that luxury of having eye contact between the musicians in the moment so those sort of natural corrections that they do we sort of have to uh, create that just by me doing a lot of surgical listening and and just doing these little micro nudges uh, and usually that solves it uh, the other thing that for some of these edits is that there's a lot of, uh, sometimes there's just a lot of cleanup. It depends on the sound that's styled up. Uh, I have similar issues on my electric bass where sometimes there's a little uh, 60 cycle hum or something like that that shows up and it's it may not even be in the whole track. It might just be in a section. I know on my bass, even though I have active pickups, uh, sometimes if I just turn my body a particular way, next thing I know I hear a little hum. Uh, so I have to always be super mindful of position. Kenny's always very mindful of that, but then there's sometimes an open string that rings. I get that all the time on my bass. And in a live performance, the audience doesn't really notice, but when you're under the microscope on an album kind of thing, uh, I want to keep it not sterile, but I want to want to clean up the stuff that I think might be taking away from the energy of what I want the tune to be. So a lot of it's those kinds of uh, things. And then also, like I'll show you a section. Um, so on a B section, like here's an example where there's not as many edits in the B sections. Um, so you can see like right here, you know, after that A section, you saw quite a few little edits, but every once in a while, like, um, you know, players kind of get in a super zone, you know, and that's kind of what I think happened here with Kenny. He just got in a, like that blissful zone state and didn't have to do anything 
uh, to lock it in with the drums. You can, you can hear a little ring in there and things like that. So uh, when I get to gating, I'll show you how I clean some of that up. There's a couple of ways to, to do that. But you can hear the, it the feels like really good. And if I just play it with the bass and the drums, so you can hear perspective. So you get the vibe on the B sections. Okay, let's take a look at EQ first. All right, so same deal as the other tracks that we've done in this series. I'm using the Fat Filter Pro Q3. So you can see I've got a low shelf going on here. Basically, it's starting at 100 hertz, but then there's a couple of nodes, you know, 82, and then in multiples, 164, 246, where if I if I zoom in on this, like right now we're at minus 30. So if I uh, go plus 30, you can hear, you'll hear really nasty. I think that is the open string note, and I just wanted to de-emphasize it. Um, so it pulls it back a little bit. Uh, so that's one way I correct that single note. Uh, so really the EQ on the rhythm guitar is literally just a low shelf and then a little correction on uh, one note that was sort of ringing a little bit. Um, if I go to my Lindell, and I'll just A-B this, um, so this is without... versus... It just cleans it up a little bit, gets rid of that one unwanted frequency that I don't, don't want to have um, too much energy on. All right, so let's take a look at our Lindell. Uh, I'm going to bypass off. So I got a couple things going on here. So for EQ, um, I'm just doing some shelving, 70 hertz and 10K. And so there's really not much EQ here. Kenny's tone is really great and um, didn't have to do too much on the EQ on this first pass. Um, as I get to the final mixing, which I'm going to get into a little later, as I start putting the whole rhythm section together and the whole mix together, you know, you start hearing other stuff. You start hearing um, bumps in different energy uh, frequencies, uh, and then you can you make corrections kind of on a continual basis until it gets dialed into the way you like it. So, so for EQ, that's pretty much it. It's just some shelving, and then the subtractive EQ for that one frequency, that 82 hertz and a couple of multiples. Next, uh, let's talk a little bit about compression. So Kenny did some processing on his end when he recorded. So he probably did a little bit of compression. So I've just added a very light two to one compression. Um, thresholds, mostly I think, you know, it's like at minus 10. Um, so I'd say that's kind of in the middle. I'm using this Lindell, um, this Neve console thing. It's got a, uh, uh, well, it's called the Nevo mode, and that's um, that's like a little secret sauce for that particular channel strip. Um, that's um, it does a couple kind of colorations that are uh, kind of cool that I like. So I just flipped it in on there, and then um, and I'm gonna basically bypass the compressor. So you can hear and bypass these uh, shelving. So it should be pretty subtle. So if this is without anything from this plug. Um, and I'll do things in steps. Uh, so we're going to start with just the, the shelving. So it just makes it a little more focused, a little more defined, uh, with just something as simple as a little bit of shelving. Um, so we're taking from where we left off, and so the EQ's done. 
for now and this is without compression then I'll add it in. And you can see right here it shows you the compression. So it shows you that uh, it shows you how it's working and you know I might even tweak it a little bit more because if you look at it you'll see it start to accumulate. Yeah, so I kind of like it at minus 6 instead of minus 10. So I'm just going to go with that and save that. All right, so there's there's that. And I'm going to show you, there's there's two ways I might go about dealing with this uh, ring out issue. Um, I'll show you the easy method first, which is gating. Yeah, so about bar 213, I think, is where I'm going to start from. So that's where I hear it. Yeah, so right there, I'm hearing that ring. So let's go over to the Lindell and engage the gate. So I, I basically, I just upped the threshold until it was kind of in a nice spot it's the, i set the range all the way to 60 and it's a 500 millisecond recovery time so it's sort of a slow recovery of about a half second coming back and you'll see that on this meter here for g for gate and you know and i'm in at minus 12 db on my threshold um I found that if I if I was lower, it was still sounded a little, it sounded kind of clean, but it wasn't really removing that uh, that low tone. And you know, the key with the gate is to try and find the sweet spot on the threshold, so that you can kind of remove the stuff you don't want, but it doesn't take away from you know the general thing that he's doing there. And then the other thing I should mention on the gate is um, if I had the fast button turned on it would gate sooner and and it, but it does tend to uh usually a fast attack time on a gate what it ends up doing for um especially percussive things um, for flute no problem right but for guitar when you get a nice bright attack transient or a drum like a snare drum uh it actually takes away from that attack transient um, and makes it a little duller. So I don't want that. So I'm just leaving it on normal, not fast mode for the attack time. And then um, this particular plug channel strip, there's not like a range where you can adjust a knob. It's just on fast or on regular. Okay, so this is with the gate and I'll flip back and forth with it on and off. Versus you can really hear it like it really eliminates most of that right um, and now I'm gonna play um, a bigger version of this B section uh, with the gate on and and show you one other aspect of things I'm hearing where some things are kind of coming through it sounds you know like a little not controlled on that on the one tone
Yeah, so right around bar 212, um, you can hear it, the little ring out of that one open string. It's just coming out a little bit above the threshold. And the problem is if I move the threshold any lower, then it takes away from some of the the coolness of the track. It just starts chopping into uh, what Kenny's doing. Where, like right now it's in a sweet spot where it's staying out of the way. So for bar 212, it's just a couple things that I'm hearing in there. And uh, so the easy method is the gate. The not so easy method is for me to actually zoom in and do a little cleanup. And there's a couple of ways of doing it. One is I can just, you know, like on these gaps, I can just have slip mode on. I can just grab it, separate it out. And then I can just lower it like 12 dB or something like that. And then create a little seam. And that'll clean it up. So that's one way of going about it. But I would have to do that for wherever it is where it's sticking out of the track. So that's literally producer call. You know, it's like if you want to spend the time to do that, go for it. The other thing is that may be completely unnoticeable when I bring in the whole rhythm section. Uh, so let's let's just do that with the bass and the drums. And I'm going to toss in the, the Fender Rhodes as well. There it is. All right, so here's the whole rhythm section. Right, and keep in mind, I got the guitar loud, right? So if I put it back at its, what I call my desired level for what I'm hearing so far, this is what it sounds like. Um, you're barely noticing it here so it's not anything I'm worrying about right now if I need to go super surgical later I can do that um, and kind of like what I mentioned earlier it's like I don't necessarily want to be too surgical it has to feel right that's what it's about right there uh, it, it just has to feel right and uh, these imperfections that happen with human beings playing um, can be kind of magical and it's about respecting that part of the recording process that all sorts of things happen in the recording situation that add to what the vibe of the sound of everything is going to be uh, i tend to respect that a lot one of the other things i wanted to show you guys is uh panning this is a mono source track but i'm running it through some stereo plugs i start off mono with my Pro Q3 and a mono on the channel strip here, right? But then I've added um, little Dr. MS, little spatial processing. And this is a really cool plug. It's, it's a way for me to get a lot more out of mid and side kinds of components of where things are sounding in the stereo field and has a little oscilloscope that'll show me what's happening. Um, and this is just a very gentle widener, uh, but you, there's a lot that you can tweak on this. So for instance, I'm gonna start with, without it, this is what the track sounds like. So that's my original track, you know, with the EQ compression and the gating. All right, so here's with the spatial processing and what I'm going to do is I'm going to yeah I'm just going to solo different parts of it so I've got it on I've got you know some mid stuff some width on the side and then I've got a little zoom stuff that uh, allows a little focus thing to happen so and you can kind of pick and choose like there's a high pass filter going on here so I'm just going to solo this is just what's being processed on the mids Um, and here's an example of just the, the focus. Bypassed.
you can hear it's actually adding some a uh, decent amount of gain um but it's also like uh you can see the signal change here between bypassed hear how it just sort of spreads out um i think that's just a really cool groovy thing okay one other component is panning i'll get into this probably more when i talk about the whole rhythm section together but i'm panning the keys and the guitars so that the guitars are basically you know, like the stereo image of the guitar is not stereo like hard left, hard right. It's it's basically like, you know, instead of this, it's more like that. And so, like, if I'm if you think about if this is the left side and this is the right side and this is the center, I'm moving the guitar so that it's kind of covering from like let's say two o'clock to oh seven o'clock um that's the guitar on this part of that circle right and then on on the keyboard i'm doing the opposite where it's on this part of the circle but i'm also like it's not perfectly like i did um you know 33 to the left on the left side and 100 on the right meaning fully hard right on the right side for the keyboards but for the guitar i didn't go hard left i went um you know mostly to the left and 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 then uh, that what that does for me is it puts both of them in a good space where they sound fairly balanced on both the left and the right side with all the rest of the tracks the drums and horn section and all that the but it tightens that guitar just a little bit it gives me a little more control if it's too wide it sometimes becomes a little harder control as far as how it sits in a mix so sometimes i'll tighten um, instead of making it like 50 50 um, uh, i'll tighten one element or another because it just sounds better to me um, so that's the panning kind of point and then the final point is reverb so I'm just sending to um, I'm not using the big plate I'm using the little plate uh, so I've got right here it's the uh, fab filter uh, uh, pro R which is the reverb and I've just got a snare plate and uh, what it's doing it's a very short 0.38 second plate with a 5.5 millisecond pre delay um, which I think I mentioned in a previous video when I was talking about the snare uh, it just thickens things a little bit. So I'm just going to uh, A-B this with and without this um, this plate on. So this is with everything, all the EQ and all the toys, all the plugins in, plus uh, right now without the plate, and then I'll add it in. Uh, creates a little more of a cool space. So the spatialization kind of component is this combination of panning, uh, using spatial processing like the Dr. MS, and also of reverbs. Uh, and that puts it in a little zone. Now I'm going to put it back to the right volume, and I'm going to bring in the rest of the rhythm section so you can kind of hear how everything sounds together. And I'm going to put in you know, the other reverbs and stuff so you can hear the whole rhythm section with all the verbs and the processing. There you go. That's the guitar stuff on the rhythm guitar. Next up, I'm going to talk about the lead guitar on this tune. See you guys soon. <laughs>